What's going on? I'm John. About two months ago, I came up with an idea for a fantasy story that I absolutely love. The only problem was, I've never built a fantasy world before. So as I was thinking about doing this process, I realized, why not follow in the footsteps of one of the best? Brandon Sanderson, with some of the highest rated books on Goodreads and loved by hundreds of thousands of readers, there's got to be something to learn. Many praise his world building in the Stormlight Archive as rivaling that of The Lord of the Rings and The Wheel of Time. And with the grand scale of the Cosmere universe that he writes in, he may even overshadow those two greats yet. He's also the perfect person to learn from because he's already put out a ton of free information about world building as he sees it. So in this video, I'm going to soak up as much information as I can about how Brandon Sanderson builds his fantasy worlds and apply this information to building my own world. So the first way I'm going to learn about how Brandon Sanderson does world building is to rewatch through his world building lectures in his sci-fi and fantasy course. Uh, your ability to solve problems with magic in a satisfying way is directly proportional to how well the reader understands that magic. Okay, so this lecture was interesting for me to revisit. I actually didn't think about the magic system for my story at all all yet, and this is because the thing that really got me excited about telling this story was not magic or any other typical fantasy elements. What really excited me about this world was the societal structure and how the protagonist's low position in the story poses challenges for him. I did immediately, as soon as I realized this lecture was going to be about magic systems, I did immediately think of a way to relate the magic to this idea that I already had. So I don't have any sort of specific magic, but I do know how I want the magic to relate to this societal structure. I'm going to have to keep these things in mind for sure when I'm working on constructing my own world. I'm back again today and I'm going to be watching the second lecture in the world building lectures. So today's lecture is going to be a little bit more about the world and culture rather than just the magic. So I'm very interested to get into this one because that is the most interesting part of the world that I want to create. And we can riff on it to the point that that one thing changed in an interesting way, can make your whole fantasy story. And I think that probably the most important idea of this entire lecture was about world building effectively and about picking only a few of these ideas to focus on deeply. And then interconnecting those ideas you've decided to focus on deeply with the other ones so that you fill out the world. I think that was a really cool concept and I'm looking forward to figuring out which ones I'm going to develop. I already know culturally that hierarchy is going to be a big one. But I think this lecture really captured some of the concrete details about how you would make this interconnected world. And I think that's probably going to be the most useful concept I take out of this. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to go through Brandon Sanderson's third world building lecture. This one's just going to be a Q&A. Hopefully we'll get some good information from this too. Create the type of art you want to create. And if world building is like pulling teeth for you, then write books where you don't need it. I just finished watching through and taking notes on the Q&A. This one was a little bit more all over the place with some just like fun stuff, but I did take some good lessons out of it. Things that I found most useful were talking about internal versus external consistency, talking about writing for different audiences, and making magic systems work in your story. Okay, so as I mentioned yesterday, today I'm going to be diving into Brandon Sanderson's site and reading some of the free information he's put out on world building, taking notes and seeing what I can glean from this information. Okay, so I just finished reading through all of the articles about world building on Brandon Sanderson's site, and I did get some good information from this. Most of it did overlap with some of the things that he talked about in his lectures. However, there was some stuff that stood out to me as being a little bit different. Another thing he talked about was like the different ways of going about actually doing the world building. For instance, he talked about how in a smaller scale world, where it's not this sprawling epic fantasy, he doesn't necessarily do this really structured, dedicated world building where he's like focusing on the specific details and going through the entire, like fleshing the entire thing out one at a time. Rather, he does the world building in more like a like rabbit hole sort of sense where he just follows the thread. So he is thinking about this one thing related to the character and, and that means that he has to go research this other thing. He figures that out, but that means he has to go research this other thing, you know, and he kind of does the world building in this like, <laughs> this is totally a nerdy way. I was thinking of it like a search-based algorithm, but we won't talk about those right now. 
<laughs> he does the world building in this, you know, explorative sort of way. When he was doing world building for the Stormlight Archive, he had to be a little more intentional about it. So he was looking at these specific topics and really delving deep on the topics that were going to matter to the story. So I think that, that makes sense. And I am thinking that I'm going to be leaning more and more toward epic fantasy. So I may have to do world building in that sort of uh, method. So we'll see. I continued researching Brandon Sanderson's world building process generally using the Writing Excuses podcast, but I realized that I was researching too much without trying to actually apply the lessons. Okay, so before I actually get started on research today, I actually have to figure out a few things about the world building first. As we've heard over the last few days of research, Brandon Sanderson recommends picking specific topics to dive deep into and really filling out those topics. And then for the other topics, which are not your main focus of your world building, figure out how they connect to the main topics. And for this reason, it doesn't make sense for me to watch every single episode of the Writing Excuses podcast for world building, at least not in the context of this video. What does make sense is to figure out which topics I want to focus on, which physical and cultural settings I want to focus on, and then use the Writing Excuses podcast episode that's relevant to those topics to get more information to start with. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to figure out what physical and cultural settings I want to dive deep on, and then I'm going to do more research and learn more about those. Not sure what sort of magic I do yet or use. Okay, I figured out some of these main things that I'm going to need to focus on. For example, I know that I do want to have some sort of magic, but I don't know at all what that's going to be quite yet. The other main thing I know about this world is that there's like this rigid caste system. So another thing I want to dive into is learning about the hierarchies and trying to research that as well as build out my own definition of it in my story. And two things that tie into that into understanding how that's going to work is the economic system and the government. The economic system is relevant because it determines how people will be, you know, paid across these hierarchies and the government is relevant because I need to know how these hierarchies are enforced. Also, I want to look into taboos a little bit because I do want it to be taboo to educate the lowest members of the society. I'm going to have to look into those things mostly and then I can build out the other ones a little bit, but they're not so relevant to supporting these main things. But overall, the main ones that I really need to dive into deep are magic and the hierarchies. So I'm going to get started on researching these main topics and look for episodes that correspond to each of them using the Writing Excuses podcast. I felt like I was still focusing too much on research without actually applying it, so I decided to change up my approach. So today's the first day where I'm going to be switching up the style of the way I do things a little bit. And what does this mean? Basically what I mean is that I'm going to be diving into one topic at a time, researching about that one topic, and then after researching it, directly after researching it, I'm going to go into actually implementing the research and creating the world building around that topic. For instance, I've been listening to a lot of stuff about magic systems recently. I listened to the lecture about it first with Samson's Laws and then these two podcast episodes on writing excuses. So I feel like I've been doing this quite a bit and I'm going to finish up my research with it by reading the articles on Brandon's site about magic systems, about creating magic systems. And then after I finish that, I'm going to directly apply it to creating my own magic system for the story I'm working on. So first, let's get into reading the articles from this site, and then we'll get into actually creating the magic system. Okay, so I just finished reading through all those articles. There actually wasn't a ton of new content that I haven't read before by Brandon Sanderson, but there were some gems here and there. One of the main things I took away was something he said, a great magic system is one that has limitations that force the characters to be creative, uses good visuals to make the scene engaging on the page, and ties to culture, the world, and viewpoint characters. He also talked about magic systems teetering between mysticism and science, which also makes sense, especially considering that he likes from writing mostly hard magic systems, so it's kind of like they have really defined uh, limitations to them. And then one thing that he said that actually inspired me and made me think about this in an interesting way is he said to make sure that it, the magic is fun. And that made a lot of sense to me. So what I was thinking is the way that I might go about approaching this is literally to think about like to brainstorm for myself. If I could have like a superpower or whatever, or some sort of like magical ability, what, which one would I want to have? And basically 
you know, come up with a bunch of ones that are really fun and that people would want to have and then figure out which ones from that list fit best with the story that I'm trying to tell with the characters and the culture that I'm trying to write the story inside of. And then after that, figure out a limitation or limitations that I can apply to this magic in a way that it will enhance the story. So that's the process that I'm going to take right now to figure out this whole magic system thing. So let's do it. Okay, so I basically just brainstormed a bunch of ideas for stuff that would be cool to have, like cool abilities that I personally would like to have. But these ideas are starting to run a little bit low, slow down. So what I'm going to do is switch to a little slightly different topic. And I'm going to try and create ideas that would be relevant to the story world that I'm building this in specifically, especially around the element of the hierarchy, which I haven't really talked about too much, but is the main part of the world building. So I'm going to try and come with some ideas for powers that the people at the top wouldn't want the other people to be able to access. That's going to be the seed for the ideas I'm going to generate right now. So let's get back into it. Let's keep generating ideas. Okay, so I figured out the basics of a magic system that I think would be interesting. I added some limitations to it that made it even more interesting. But I feel like I need to figure out the shape of the story a little bit more. Since I don't really know what I want the story to be like, it's difficult to know how the magic should be in order to serve that story. I decided to start by outlining the story, because then I'd know what magic would actually be relevant. Okay, so many days have passed since the last time we were talking about world building, because I've been trying to figure out some of these plot details and outline the story a little bit, so that I know how the magic system will be relevant to the story, as well as what other information I need to know about the world to proceed in outlining. Well, I just ran up against basically a brick wall while I was doing the outlining, and I realized I really need to know about the hierarchy, and I also need to know about the magic system a little bit more, so that I know how to incorporate it into the story, instead of just using some sort of placeholder and just saying like, oh, he's learning this sort of skill, <laughs> unnamed skill. So today I'm going to get back into doing this world building and I think I'm going to start with brainstorming magic system ideas because I don't think that the last one was actually a good fit. I thought it was all right, but as the days have gone on, it's gotten less interesting to me and I don't really know how I could use it to formulate a real story. So I, I could keep it in the back of my mind because I think it'd be a cool ability to have, but... I don't think that it is necessarily a good fit for this particular story. So I need to figure out some sort of other magic system. <sighs> oh wow, I've been recording for a long time. Well, it may look like I'm just messing around right now. But actually, what I'm thinking about is having a skill-based sort of magic. And I was looking into professions that were really common a long time ago to try to find some sort of skills that'd be really interesting to make a magic system out of. So that is what I was actually doing. And this might be coming out of like totally left field, but I think I'm actually going to hold off on magic systems for now because I feel like this is going to take a while and I would really like to figure out how to outline the story completely and the thing that's really holding me back, if I think about it, is not understanding the hierarchy element. It's not necessarily um, a lack of understanding the magic system. I can still use a placeholder for now, and that'll be fine. And if I have to go back and make changes, that's fine too. But I think the thing that's really holding me back is this understanding that I don't really know about one of the key elements of the world building, which is the hierarchy. So I think what I'm actually going to do now is start on some research about caste systems and try to understand this a little bit more. And one thing that I picked up from the Writing Excuses podcast in the past was using Wikipedia as like the starting point. Basically, the process involved reading generally about a topic, then using the article's references to find more detailed resources about the topic, and then using those resources to learn. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Oh 
Okay, so I started with my research and read over some Wikipedia stuff. And when I was looking over the various different countries and the systems that were present in these countries, one stood out as potentially the most interesting to me. And if you know anything about me, if you've seen any of my other videos, you could probably guess what it was. It was the system present in Japan during the Edo period. So I kind of went down the rabbit hole a little bit and tried to find out more information about that. Unfortunately, the Wikipedia article on the Edo period was really, well, relatively poorly researched. There were only two books listed as sources. Both of them are available on archive.com so I can read them for free, so that's cool. But they both seem to be kind of tangentially touching on the topic. Like one of them was more about how modern Japan formed. So it really just started with the Edo period talking about it a little bit and then the rest of the book is really about the lead up to everything else. The other book was, well this one's actually probably better. The other book is about Japan before you know, that American guy showed up on the coast and was like, yo, trade us some stuff. That's my uh, summary of how it happened. <laughs> I'll look into this one a little bit too, but more than anything else, I want to look into the social structure. So I just read something that was interesting in that it applies probably to other parts of the story besides just the hierarchy elements. During this time in Japan, there was a shift from these alliances based on class. So, you know, only relying on samurai for a certain thing or merchants kind of being looked down upon to the necessity of focusing on people who had the right skills, whether those were mercantile or militaristic type skills. So that seems like it could be an interesting setting for what I'm trying to write as well. Well, maybe, I don't know. First of all, this guy is not going to be in one of these normal standard classes. So it's already been going to be hard enough. But I'm wondering if like it would be cool to have it as be like a very big like time of change already where things are, you know, shifting and it's kind of a time of instability. If I do decide to do that, then this might be an interesting kind of model to base it after and place a focus on how certain skills were really valuable during this time. Being really skilled in those areas or would allow people to move up even if they didn't have the right, you know, family history or whatever. Anyway, that is an interesting detail that I just noticed, but I'm going to continue with my reading now. In my research, I read an article about the origin of the untouchable class in Edo, Japan. And it was through this article that I learned much of what I would need to create the hierarchy. I might have enough for now as far as figuring out the basics of the hierarchy and the untouchable group. So I might be able to do that and then move back into working on the outline and just finishing up those details of the story. I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to figure out the details of this hierarchy. I might listen to some of the writing excuses episodes about, you know, structure in society. I opened a few of those up and then also try to incorporate some of the learnings from that into my own building of this hierarchy. And then I think I'm going to go back and work on some more of the outlining to get a really um, good overview of this story in general so that I have the information that I need in order to finish the rest of the world building to create a world that would support the themes of the story, or as John Truby talks about it, the moral argument. So the first step that I'm going to take is figure out the details of this hierarchy and how it connects with the elements, with other elements of society potentially. So I'm going to get into that right now. Okay, so I was in the middle of figuring out some of this hierarchy information and I did figure out some of these details and at least write down some of the things that I would like to have in place in the system. Most of it is said in very general ways because I don't really know how it corresponds with other things yet because I don't know the details of the other things yet. As I tried to make decisions about the hierarchy, I ran up against this feeling of unease. I didn't realize this yet, but my uneasiness stemmed from the fear of making major world building and story decisions that I may have to change anyway. So rather than completely defining the hierarchy, I shifted gears to finishing up my outline of the character arcs. So it has been quite a while since I actually was working on any world building for my epic fantasy story. And this is because I had various things to do, like first I was making sure that I got a basic outline done so I knew where the story was going to go and what sort of world building I would need to focus on more specifically in more detail and what I might not need to focus on in as much detail. Now that I have my basic outline for the story, I know what my three characters are going to be doing, I can actually start working on the world building for the main aspects 
that will be relevant to these characters lives. While I was working on the outlining, I did actually end up doing two bits of world building. One of them I should have already talked about, which was how the hierarchy works. But another one I completely forgot to film and talk about, but I already figured it out. It was the government structure, basically. I know that it's going to be this sort of like empire and there's going to be an emperor, which is kind of like the spiritual head of the country. However, he's not really running the day to day. There's going to be like a, or I don't know what to call him yet, but like a regent slash prime minister sort of character that's going to be running sort of the day to day. Anyway, there's a lot of details to the government that I could go into, but that's kind of like the basics. Just to let you know, like I've already done that. So now that I've actually finished with this outline, I want to figure out which other areas I need to go into in detail. I know economics is going to be one. So let's just look into some of these other areas and try to figure out which ones I really need to delve deep into to make sure that the worlds that I'm building for these characters are filled out. Okay, so I figured out the main things I need to focus on. I already know that government is going to be a big one because it's important for the third character and the political sort of intrigue, mystery sort of plot. The economic system is going to be important for the first character and like the rising out of the hierarchy sort of thing. History is going to be somewhat important because I need to figure out the background of like how these different groups got together. Like, well, how the hierarchy arose to start with and all that stuff. The hierarchy I already talked about. And then military tradition is going to be important for the second character, for the soldier sort of character. So that's another one that I need to go pretty deeply into. I think as far as like the other ones, you know, I don't need to go as deeply into them, but religion might be another one that I have to go decently deep into because I'm thinking religion might be a factor in deciding the role of this sort of untouchable class and what sort of work they do. And it might be a factor that allows our first main character to kind of create a monopoly on a certain bit of work and gain resources in such a way that he's able to move out of his class position. Anyway, that is something that I might have to dig into a little bit, but for now I have my main areas that I need to dig into pretty deeply. I've already gone deeply into government and hierarchy, and I need to move on to some of the other topics like economics. As Brandon Sanderson advised, I'm using the world building to explore the most important topics very deeply. And then from that foundation, I'll be able to create links toward the other cultural and world-based topics. So let's just get into this first topic. I'm going to delve into economics and try to figure out how this is going to work first. Okay, so I just finished up a bunch of this economic world building and research. Overall, I decided that it was going to be pretty similar to a standard economy of that time period of a sort of feudal sort of society. The main thing I focused on was researching professions, and especially the professions that were the least desired during this time period, because I'm going to have standard professions for the different classes, you know, the peasants, merchants, the artisans and craftsmen, the warriors slash duelists, the religious men and women. All of these classes already have some sort of standard jobs that are passed down from generation to generation. So really I was focusing on trying to figure out what would the jobs be for the people that are in this untouchable class. So that involves doing a lot of disgusting research into some of the least liked and least desirable jobs of the past. And let's just say you wouldn't want to be reading about these jobs when you're trying to eat dinner. <laughs> So since I figured out all that stuff, now I'm going to move on to another topic in world building. I need to figure out which one I want to do. Okay, so next I'm going to research a little bit about military tradition. So I was trying to do research the last day or so about military tradition and whatnot, but I wasn't really feeling like I was getting anywhere. I did a bunch of research about different things. So what I'm going to do for research is I'm actually going to lean on something that I read on Brandon Sanderson's site a while back and that I just revisited because I was trying to look for ways to solve this problem. And one of the things that Brandon Sanderson does is he uses books that he calls survey books, or basically they're like overviews, the history of dot dot dot, where you're learning about a topic in general so that you can talk about it intelligently, write about it intelligently, and that is what I'm going to try to find right now. So let's just find one of these and then I'll get started on reading it. something about military history or tradition, something like that. Starting research on military tradition is where I really ran into a brick wall of unease. I didn't immediately identify this emotion or its source, so I ended up spending multiple days making very little progress and feeling like I wasn't getting anywhere. 
Not making any progress anyway, I decided almost at a whim to try listening to some of the more general Writing Excuses podcast episodes. And in one called How to Practice World Building, I found a solution for my problems. So Brandon gave me a story Bible mm -hmm. and then I and, and an outline, and then I wrote from that. Mm -hmm. And there were pieces of the world building that I'm reading. I'm like, this makes no freaking sense at all. Brandon, what? You're supposed to be so girl, good at world building. What is this? Mm -hmm. And the conversation that we had was that a lot of times it's not so much that you have it all worked out ahead of time. It's that when you get to it, you can make the interstitial pieces work. I realized that I was trying to define every aspect of the world and do so perfectly on the first try. And since it's not possible to do either of these tasks, I was getting completely stuck. So rather than continue pursuing this impossible perfection, I decided to finish the world building as well as I could and improve it over time. So I just finished figuring out all the details about military tradition. It took a little while, but now I understand kind of how the military is going to work. I had to decide whether or not women are specifically restricted from being in the military. And I think rather than having any specific restrictions, it's more like, it's kind of a taboo thing in this time period, in this era. And now that I've finished elaborating on all the main ideas of the world building, I'm just gonna go through and fill out the less significant cultural issues for my story world. And I'm going to connect those with the bigger issues that I've researched in more depth. Just like Brandon Sanderson talks about, pick a few main things and then connect the details about the less significant elements of the world building with these more significant elements. So that is what I'm doing right now. I haven't thought about the physical world that much yet. So now I'm going to actually work kind of backwards and design the physical world that would have been able to create this cultural situation. So that is what I'm going to get into today. I'm going to work on all sorts of things like flora and fauna, weather, the visuals of the world, cosmology, climate, terrain, um, all sorts of stuff like that. I just finished coming up with some of the physical setting details. However, there are some things that I still need to figure out. It's very fitting for this video and the saga that has come out of this world building idea, but I need to know the geography of the world they're living in before I can figure out some of these physical details, like the weather, flora, and fauna. Like those things are dependent on what sort of area we're looking at in the world. and. I need to figure out what the actual areas are, what the other countries that exist are, and that sort of thing. I'm gonna have to take a little bit of an aside, figure out all this mapping stuff, and then when I come able to go into some of these more physical setting details that are specific to the locations in the world. So I just finished up working on the fantasy map, and now that I understand those details, the countries that exist on the map, the geography of the map, and the terrain that exists, I'm ready to figure out the last few details of the physical world building. Okay, so I just finished up with the last little bit of world building, figuring out the physical details, and then also I went back and figured out some things like cultural values. And one thing that I still want to do with regard to this world building is I want to go through and make sure that everything is congruent, that all of the pieces fit together and actually make sense, and try to smooth over some of the things that might seem like they don't make sense given the other aspects of the culture. So that's what I'm gonna focus on right now. I'm gonna go back through my world building notes, make sure all of it seems congruent. It should be relatively congruent already, but I think particularly with the physical world and the cultural world, I wanna make sure those are squared away because I camp with the cultural world first and then the physical world. I'm gonna read through it real quick and fix any of the problems that I notice and get back to you with how it all went. So I just finished going back over the world building document, I guess. I don't know what to call it. My notes, basically. I went over all of the main components and did how they were connecting to the more minor secondary concerns of the world building. I think it all does tie together pretty well, so I'm very happy with that. I also spent a little bit of time elaborating on some of the more secondary aspects. Like, there were some that I left a little bit vague, 
So I wanted to go into it and really clarify some of the details a little bit more, make the writing process easier in the future. Also, I did spend some time looking through the magic system and making sure that the magic I created actually is well developed enough. And I was referring specifically to an article by Brandon Saracen. She talked about how you decide when a magic system is done. And basically it seems like Brandon Saracen thinks that a magic system should be a tool to serve the story, which makes sense. So if you think you have enough of the magic system defined to be able to write the story, then you're ready. For each of the characters, I went through and clarified how this magic system would be present in their area of life, whether it's present for nobility and in politics, in being a soldier or in militarism, and whether it's present among the lowest classes of society and how it functions in their lives. I went through and I made sure that I understood all of these details, so I think that I'm done with world building. I figured out the details that are necessary to write the story, and now I'm actually ready to figure out the plot in a little bit more detail. So in a future video, I'm going to be going through each of these characters' arcs scene by scene and coming up with these story details. Now that I have all this world building in place, now that I have the general character arcs in place, I'm ready to actually do that. So that's going to be the final step before I actually get into writing this story. But one last thing I do want to do is share with you what I learned from actually going through this process. Because this world building process has taken multiple weeks, if not months, I'm going to have to think back and reflect on this experience and I'll be able to share lessons that I learned from this experience with you. So I'm going to take some time to reflect on that and I'll get back to you with these lessons that I learned from world building like Brandon Sanderson. So I have had a bit of a think, <laughs> a little bit of a reflection. I've gone through and thought about some of the most important lessons that I learned from this process and I came up with three of the most important lessons. The first is something that Brandon Sanderson touches on in his sci-fi fantasy lectures. And this is the idea of going deep on only a few aspects of your world building. This was really useful for me because if I had not done this, if I had tried to go deep on all of the aspects, this definitely wouldn't have been done in two months and may not have been done even after a year. So instead of diving deep on every single aspect of the world, I focused on a few main cultural and physical aspects of the world building. I dove deep on those, I did a bunch of research on those, and by understanding those, I was able to create the foundation for the entire rest of the world. I highly recommend doing this as well in your world building because you really only have so much time in life, and how long do you really want to spend coming up with a world to write you know, one story or one series in that world? The next thing that I think was very useful for me during this process was actually Sanderson's second law. And that was that limitations and costs are more interesting than the actual powers themselves. And this helped me avoid discarding an idea that I had for a magic system during the brainstorming process. Because way back when, when I was working on outlining a few of the character arcs, I came up with an idea for a magic system in this story. And initially it didn't really sound that interesting, it sounded all right. And I realized because I had just seen his lectures and I had just seen him talk about this law that the reason why it might not be that interesting is because it didn't really have any limitations or costs. And when I actually came up with the limitations for using this magic, it became so much more interesting and the magic actually sounded like something fun to include in my story. So I definitely found this law useful when coming up with a magic system. And then the last main takeaway that I had from doing this whole process, and of course there were other takeaways that I had, but I'm just giving you the most valuable ones, the most important ones that I had from doing this process. The last one that was probably the most important takeaway overall is that you don't have to get everything perfect. You don't have to define every little aspect of your world before you start writing the story. And maybe this is an obvious thing to some people. Maybe if you're a discovery writer or pants or whatever you want to call yourself, you don't really do this anyway. You just start writing. But for me, when I was initially looking at this process and seeing all the things that I wanted to define, it seemed a little bit overwhelming to say the least. And when I was listening to this episode of Writing Excuses and I heard Mary Robinette talking about how Brandon Sanderson doesn't really define everything in advance. How about when she was looking at his world building notes, she was surprised at how much room he left for expansion on things and how much was undecided going into writing the story. And this was very freeing for me to come into contact with as somebody who was thinking that I was going to have to decide so many things in advance and feeling like I was burdened with the task of deciding all of these things before I ever got started on writing. Overall, this was a very tough, but enjoyable experience. I'm happy that I was able to come to 
some sort of understanding of my world that I was able to get this foundation built and that I now actually feel prepared to go into outlining scene by scene and then actually getting started on the writing. There were definitely a lot of diversions. There were lots of rabbit holes that I had to dive down and there are still things that I need to decide before I get to writing this story. For example, names. I don't know any names of places. I don't know names of things. I don't know names of people, but I'm actually saving the naming for the next video because in the next video, I'm going to be outlining scene by scene each of the characters arcs in Plotter. And in Plotter, they have a places tab as well as a characters tab that where you can specifically add characters and places and all that stuff and details about each of those things. So I think it actually makes sense to come up with the details about the characters and places when I'm doing this plotting process in Plotter. So that is what I'm going to be doing in the very next video of this series about writing an epic fantasy series. So look out for that in the very near future. I'm curious, how do you go about doing your own world building? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button so that YouTube knows to share with other writers like you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <sighs> this took so long. <laughs> this process was definitely